welcome, 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 everybody, to Beer Googles. Hola. Check Mark in the house. Oh, no. God help I've us. got my Check mug and everything. How are you doing, Christopher? Uh, you were not expecting that, were you, Devin? No, not at all. I kind of like That's how we though. work. Yes, is is we have many voices here. We can do Ronald Reagan if you want. We can Don't. do the Trump. We have Trump impression. <laughs> do we can you do know, Bernie. Do you, I do a very, up, very good Bernie Sanders. On the way over here, I saw a license plate. It was huge. The license huge. plate said huge. <laughs> is it huge? <laughs> it did. And it was on this little Toyota, which so I'm like, is he making fun of Trump or is he a Trump guy? And I, of course, in my head, I go, huge. huge. <laughs> oh, my God. Huge. That was like a really good yeah. impression. I, I learned it by our one of our executive producers out of Texas, yes. Jess, Jess, Jess Garcia. Garcia. Greatest says, impression ever. Huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be the greatest I kind of thing ever. talking to the president right now. It's, it's I, the greatest. I could have a conversation with Ronald Reagan and, and Trump. He'd be like, Mr. Trump, tear down this wall. Marx thinks his impressions are better than they really are. It's so true. I just basically entertain him and let him run rampant. I have a friend who's like, uh, honestly, I, they're not even an impressionist, but they uh, it's like a thing that they always just do impressions and they're always spot on. So we've made it into a game where you'll just say a random celebrity and they'll just be forced to do it, never never having done it before. And it's always so good. And we turn it into a drinking game. Oh, my God. I love that. Our that other friend Rachel amazing. does this Grinch impression. Like when she has like a lot of energy and, and <laughs> it alcohol. literally and I think it's my favorite impression because it's just That's so random. Awesome. Because, like, who does a Grinch impression? I don't know. And she's, like, a pretty girl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, mean like, you mean, like, you're a mean one, Mr. No, Grinch. Literally. Yeah, except, what, what is it? Um, she It's does, that monologue that's, like, kind of famous. Yeah, the really long one. I don't even know uh, what it is. Seven in the morning, so time for self-pity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That is but beautiful. But she's, Do you like, wanna... this little girl, so, like, the voice does not match the no. body whatsoever. So, so we want to introduce you guys, right? Please, go Before ahead and introduce our guests, shit. Marcus. Sorry. Hey, everybody. No, Psst, Brandon, don't. there's no apologies here. This is Beer Googles, my friend. Double E. Double O. Double G. <laughs> and we've got Brandon and Devin of the Music You're Missing podcast. Is that Welcome. right, guys? Yes, yeah. that is correct. Welcome. We're going to keep all that other shit in, by the way, just so you know, because that's how we roll. Yeah. That's Perfect. fine with us. Have you so listened you guys to doing? some of our stuff? Yeah. How's Boston over there? You got a bubbler? Uh, Back in the con Harvard yard, you know. So the Boston accent is is a thing, but the way that it is shown in media is so not true. It just so like that um, Hyundai commercial. I don't know. Yes, that the one? The from one the Super Bowl. Just, yeah, the Super Bowl one. Yeah, like that is just so unrealistic. And anywhere I go, they're like, "You don't have a Boston accent," and I'm like. I know because not everyone from Boston has like a Boston accent. Yeah, and that's accent. another thing is I feel like it's you only have the Boston accent if you were if you have ties to Boston from like years ago. Yeah. Like modern day people are not coming out with that yeah. Boston accent. Like if your parents were like born and raised in like Southie or Charlestown, like Southie maybe, guy. Like but me personally I don't. I mean sometimes when I don't know why I think when my friends and I will go out to bar and drink <laughs> somehow we'll just be like in the city and the environment will just like it'll bring it out. Yeah, every like by the end of the night every single one of us leaves with a Boston accent. It's, like, it's not the so city, trashy. it's the alcohol. It's so ratchet. But it's kind it of is funny. the alcohol. It's the alcohol. It's not the city that brings out the accent. <laughs> <laughs> but for me it is when I go home <laughs> When it's, I go home, oh, it is. When, you when home, I fly home for a week, you guys know when I go home to Philadelphia, accent? it's I, like I come back and people are like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I just got back from home. <laughs> I drink my water. You know, that's, so if I had to guess, I would be like Canada. But yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. See, I'm not I mean, I'm not I'm from I'm from the West Coast. So I didn't know Philly had an accent. And Mark says, yeah, it's not water. It's water. I said, what the hell is water? Like with O's? He says, yeah, like water. Yeah, no, dude, water is what you build Jersey, a house with, talk. man. Yeah. Yeah, Jersey's the worst. That's a um, trash state. Jersey needs to go. Oh, sorry. Did I say that loud? Oh, <laughs> dude, we have one listener there, bro. Oh, my gosh. Stop yeah, we've it. also got one in Azerbaijan. So I think we're okay. And Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brandon, Devin, yes. music you're missing. Tell us about this awesome show that you guys curated. I'm going to let Brandon take this one away <laughs> because every time I try and explain it, I butcher it. And it's not that hard to explain. Yeah, I can definitely explain it. It, it. It's like a two-parter almost because it was something like two years ago and now it's something else. Um, but basically, for those of you that don't know, Devin and I are, we work in the music industry. Um, I was a radio personality and Devin uh, toured with a bunch of artists. We met each other working 
promotions at iHeartRadio when we were just a, a little little we lads. college students. We were like the youngest people working there. I thought Devin was a 40-year-old woman, so I didn't talk to her for like six months. Um, <laughs> turns out she was actually my age. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is like a lot. I don't want to say a lot older because we're all like in the same age range. But at the time, we were the only two people who were still in our teens and under 21. Yeah. So everyone would go out drinking. And then me and Brendan would be like, okay, we're just going to go have like a soda and like <laughs> you some chips. Tortilla <laughs> chips? <laughs> So, so you had a pop. Uh, anyhow, like, you shared a we pop were... and some chips, a little salsa. Yeah, literally. <laughs> exactly. We spent many a nights just face down in some tortilla chips. Yeah, margaritas. <laughs> R.I.P. It closed recently. Yeah, that was really sad, honestly. Um, but anyhow, we were at iHeart, and we were both kind of doing our own thing. I knew I wanted to do like radio personality, uh, and Devin was just kind of like vibing, doing artist tour stuff. Um, and like really, like Devin, how old are you? Nineteen. Devin had a lot of responsibility, but more, I mean, honestly, that's like kind of regardless, but this bitch was running shows at the age of like 20 years old. It was really, very impressive. I literally came home. Actually, Brendan's better at explaining this story because I hate talking about myself, but I literally had to run an entire It's a show. great thing for a podcast is to not talk about yourself. It's like the first rule. Right? Yeah, it, it, that's I when I start. I say, Chris, uh, we hate talking about ourselves. Let's start, put our, put our voices out there for everyone. Yeah, that's to genius, bro. <laughs> That is very true. Well, I guess it works for our format. Oh, finally, this is bringing it back to your question. It works for our format because we don't talk about ourselves on our podcast. The podcast now, what we do is we find artists who they're kind of blowing up. We, we're not working with artists who, and, and no offense to them, but we're working with artists who have like millions of streams. And and some of my favorite artists had millions of streams. Specifically, it all started when I was, I was listening to this band called The Brummies. And they had a song with Casey Musgraves, who... If you're not familiar, she literally won album of the year at the Grammys two years ago. So she's like a big deal. And these people. She don't need no Wonder Woman. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Or something like that. We're familiar. (laughs) So these people had a song with like, you know, someone who won the most coveted Grammy. And they were getting like less than a million. Well, they had like a million streams, but they were they had like 3000 followers. And I was like, that's something's not right there. And. I just started streaming like or looking into some of my favorite artists, which were like Quinn 92, John (laughs) Bellion, Chelsea Cutler, that kind of uh, group of people. And again, they were generating so many streams, but they did not have uh, they had a large following, but not as large as, you know, someone who was signed to a major label or someone who's getting pushed to radio. So I was like, okay, I definitely see an opportunity here. And I kind of want to capitalize on these people because at the same time, you know, they didn't have as large as a following as I thought they should have, but they still had a larger following than me. So if I could have capitalized on their following, also provided a service for them and created content for myself so I could later kind of, you know, pursue this radio thing. I, I was like, yeah, this is it. And yeah. I, it's I like, like a, it's like a, I scratch your back, you shave mine kind of hundred <laughs> percent. Like I'm going to lightly scratch you with like one fingernail and you're going to like, do me way more of a solid um but it actually ended up blowing up way more than i anticipated it peaked at number 29 or something in the top mm-hmm. for like 200 in the world on apple Podcasts. we got front page i got to interview like so many cool people like the brummies who i ended up they were like my first interview i got to interview the voice winner like so many awesome people and then i got signed as a radio talent and i had to stop the podcast um which brings us to part that two. That damn sad non-compete clause. Sad day for Brendan. <laughs> yeah, they get you with that non-compete all the time, don't they? Ah, uh, that is very true. Which it's funny because in Massachusetts, a non-compete is technically illegal. But notice, I said technically because it's not really illegal. <laughs> like it is illegal, but there's so many ways to kind of keep that in your contract that you still can't do anything. Oh yeah. Um, and you can get blackballed very easily. Cause it'll yeah. just make call like your boss will make a call out to someone else for you and be like, Hey, I'm going to burn that bridge for you. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, you know, that even if it, you're following all the rules, if you know, that it could potentially cause some type of trouble that you could easily get it taken away from well, you. That's what makes podcasting great though, too, is because, you know, it's a very independent thing. You can do it yourself if you need to, you don't need that, you know, set up the way the traditional radio stations are. 
Oh, definitely. And we do it on our own time and we get, we're in control of everything. And like you said, like, or like I said previously, sometimes I swear, sometimes I don't, doesn't matter. I can, I don't have to like stick to, when I was on radio, I was, I changed my name to Brendan James and I was like your <laughs> oh, country boy next door. Oh. It was so bad. After every oh my Instagram gosh, post, that's anything, awful. he would go, you get, go, a, you, get a, you get your man card revoked for that. Oh yeah. Oh, big time. Oh, I, sorry. I, go ahead, Devin. No, literally <laughs> after anything, he would say yeehaw. And I was like, Brendan, none of this. <laughs> You're uh, in Boston, not like I know Texas. Uh, how big is the how big is the country radio listener population in in Massachusetts? It's actually a lot larger than you would expect, yeah. um, because we do have like Country Fest with Kenny Chesney, mm. right? And, like ninety percent of New England goes to it. Yeah, it's like a Whoa. big <laughs> New England thing. Because we have like all like we have like New Hampshire and Maine and everything. Vermont, Robert, yeah. Yeah. And the thing well is they've so- made country music into pop. I mean it really is country pop with a little twang. It's oh, it, I mean if you uh, no, take a I pop song and you take a country song next yeah. to each other, they're they're virtually identical if you switch the singers or a little bit of the arrangement or the And there's all this hip hop influence now too. I get that. Oh yeah there is that's that's something <laughs> yes. I can't get behind. But it's funny yeah, that you say I, that. I agree. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, but it's funny you say that because it, it is so pop infused, but the listeners still kind of follow that traditional country lifestyle, which is so funny because I'm like, dude, this is like, at some points, this is like a freaking EDM song. And yet Literally. you're still being like, yeehaw, F1. Right. Like, let's be honest. Old Town Road is, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one auto, it's just like one auto tune thing the whole way <laughs> the through. Can I tell you guys? In support of Lil Nas X, like, claiming the country charts is just because of how mad the loyal country listeners would get like i'm like i don't <laughs> personally believe that's a country song but if you want to call it a country song and, and own the charts go for it man my 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 least favorite expression in the known universe is i tell you what <laughs> and that's it that's the end of the sentence and i'm like well, what's the rest of it where is the subject where that's is it the just i tell you what and who like... fixes to fix like i'm fixing to fix dinner like no i don't th- wait you got to do it okay let's get off this train but i'm gonna freak out <laughs> wait well you know what i learned live on air which was really in a, like kind of funny so luke bryan has this song called knocking boot Oh God! And of I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> and so I was Candy I used to be on a morning show, and we were talking about it. And they were like, "Well, they they made a joke about it because I was obviously like the youngest person." And they were like, "Oh, I f- forgot to mention for those of you who don't know, I was like 22 at the time. I'm 24 <laughs> now." Um, but they made they were like, "Oh, and and Brendan James over here was probably knocking boots this weekend." And I was like, "Wait, what does that what does that even mean? Like dancing? Because I did dance this weekend." And then I learned it meant doing the dirty and i was like that's really embarrassing <laughs> that that on air. <laughs> i wish I, I heard that do they still have that tape i would love oh, to for hear sure. it for sure for um, sure you didn't see this is the thing though at 24 every time you guys are like oh we're just 24 and we're double your age guys so screw you <laughs> and secondly i remember a song by candy man called knocking boots it was like a rappy type pop song okay never mind i'm just saying they're knocking boots yeah, well, I mean, I didn't know. Is it like a... Well, you're 21, Devin. Sorry, <laughs> it was like a whole three years ago. Your whole memory shot. It is. I like, like can't remember anything. Yeah, you might want to get that checked. I know, I should. I feel like we should be drinking wine. I feel so left out, dude. I know. Our or Bloody Mary. I mean, to crack something open. Mimosas yeah. or something. Well, like, we pop pills like Lipitor and like... Uh, <laughs> Like the and the diabetes ones, like all the old people stuff. I took some Ambien. We're yeah. drinking. Oh, we're we're drinking Glucerna this morning. Yes, or, or, those uh, like yes. Pediasure or whatever. Yes. old light, whatever. I ensure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure. you, I, you probably. Well, here's a little hack actually. If you do ever have a night out that is is a little too much, I am now at the point where like any amount of alcohol affects me the next day. I'll be severely hungover. Big tomorrow. Pedialyte. Obviously, you know Pedialyte's good for the hangover, but Pedialyte powder. Just put that, just eat that shit raw and it cures. No, skip Pedia, like go straight to liquid IV. And I swear to oh, God, what? it's a million. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, I've, I've got it. Yeah, I've got a home nurse in the corner of my uh, of my house. I just, hey, give me an IV in here. Bring in a lefty. <laughs> it's like no. a pitcher. I got to call it the bull, bullpen. It's like Pedialyte on steroids. Like, totally. I like, totally understand the IV thing. I've heard people just. Wait, do you like that. plug it in your body? Yeah, no, 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 no. It's like literally, it's like a powder, and you put it in your oh. water bottle. But oh. it has like the amount of electrolytes for like eight water bottles. So you're just like, you're really getting so it in there. much better. Uber hydrated. Yeah. No, I swear about it. Like, 
Oh, yeah. well, Arizona, you if you've never been, the Don't. whole dry heat thing, it's like a fucking convection oven. It is here. absolutely brutal. I was there in February. In oh, Arizona. good job. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Not July. Yeah, well right, done. Right before right before it hit 122. <laughs> So, so like, you, you just missed that one. Well, I was in like a winter coat and boots because I was on the road and I was like, oh, we're in Arizona today. Like, I'll be fine. I had to walk to CVS and I literally like, I think I lost like 10 pounds of sweat just walking <laughs> there in my coat. I'm wondering, like, from your guys' perspective, I, I just can't imagine living in a climate like the, your climate has so much control of how your day goes. Like, yeah how do you guys navigate your life with like 126 degree temperatures when you have to get shit done it's called tank tops and flip flops bro so Flop can flips. you like do you just got like automatically sunburned um it, uh, 10 minutes out here you could get yeah, pretty you could turn pink 20, pretty quickly. 20 or 30 minutes in direct sunlight you can get pink for sure yeah like so between 10 and noon to me in december here so. <laughs> in boston well, that, well this is a question though see the, the way arizonans do it is our winter is your summer correct it's flopped. so basically if you think about it like what shit can you get done in minus 10 degrees nothing nothing right same thing yeah. so when it's 126 you know 121 or whatever that's probably our max right 122 no. well this year was like 117 was yeah but we hit a 121 our 122 highest ever, right? before they were born yeah. <laughs> in, 19, in 1992 we hit 122 yeah there's this thing guys called it's before the eight before like 96 or something yeah it's called you the know, almanac pre-96 <laughs> you know i don't know if you guys heard of that but, but to answer the original question today. we're like I, uh, like i play golf so but I, and in arizona you can play year round right so but in the summertime the low in the morning at sunrise is like 82 oh and the God. high is 110 say right so I golf before like at six or 6 a.m. So I'm off the course by 1030 and it's already 95 degrees. Oh and it sucks. Do you have it's... to wear your traditional like golf gear still or? Oh, yeah. Shorts and a polo shirt. Yes, sir. Correct. No way. And I, but it's so dry. Sure. But and the thing like I'm psycho. So the day before I golf, I don't drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of salt in my nutrition diet, whatever you want to call it. And on the way to the golf course, I'll drink 32 ounces of water and I'll drink half a gallon of water on the course and i'm still having an issue like a hydro, you know like heat stroke that sort of stuff it's it's freaking brutal yeah i mean i imagine you really have to consider the weather in your like everything yeah, yeah. which is crazy yeah. because when it's cold here like yeah it's cold but i mean i can always just throw on a coat and yeah, toughen like, it up it's e a lot easier to get warmer than it is to get colder I, think. Do I would not concur. have AC like it, that has to be like a God given right. In no, it has to be. Yeah. I yeah. And that's the funny thing is like back east, you've got humidity, too. So oh, we we literally, you know, you guys have 70, 80 percent humidity. Yeah. We're like at 20. Sometimes it's down below 10. Right. And the thing is, the air conditioner is used a lot in the East Coast to get the water out of the air. Here, it's like working so hard just to cool the air itself because there's no water to take out. Yeah. It's the opposite. It's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. But like I said, right now is our wheelhouse, right? From now until probably February. February spring till spring training. Yeah, till spring training with baseball, which oh, is cool, God. too, because we have half the teams come here, which is nice. Hey, well, it keeps things entertaining. <laughs> I'm happy that you guys, at least at, like, the peak of this craziness, at least you have You're good like, weather. Spring yeah. training, yeah. Like, we have terrible weather, so, like, uh. Yeah, it's making me, like, the whole impending quarantine. So Boston right now is not shut down. Um, I definitely feel like it's going to get we shut do down. We have a curfew though, yeah. and like what time? Nine thirty. Nine thirty. You have to be off the roads by ten, but it's not like strictly enforced. But like they have limited house, like social gatherings, like at your house. Like yeah, I was at my friends in sure. the city, um, like a few weeks ago, like right before everything, like before the curfew and the rules really started. And, like, the cops came, and we're, like, we're 23, and there's, like, 10 of us here. Why are the cops here? Like, I didn't know that. Did you guys have to, like, break it up? Uh, yes, we did. Um, We did have to leave. And there was a paddy wagon. <laughs> Please. No way. Like the, like the old-timey ones that come around, like, in the cartoons with the yes, little bars like, on the back? He had a horse yeah, drawn. Literally in front <laughs> of the house, and we're, like, we're 23. Like, we're not, like, we weren't loud. Like, someone had just, like, seen that there were, like, people at the house during the curfew thing. And I was, like, 
I didn't realize I was back in high school running from the cops. Like, That's what is so this? so bizarre. Sounds like we have a high school uh, story from Devin coming up. <laughs> so what's the Actually, maximum number of people? Angel, that... so... I definitely wasn't. <laughs> what's the maximum number of people that can be gathered right now? I think, I think six. Ten? Oh. Six. Ten. Oh, six at a restaurant, ten at a house. Yeah. But, yeah and there Philly's was ten worse at the house. But... Philly, all the restaurants shut down. Everything shut down, like, completely. It's crazy. Yeah, that's honestly, so. The, Philly we... is not the c- city that I would expect to do that. Like, New York, I could see. Boston, I could see. Philly is not. Well, with all the recent stuff that's been going on with the whatever other stuff that happened in Philly recently, I think they're like, we're not going to mess with that. Mm. We're just going to shut it down. Well, ours, like, we were cruising. We pretty not like we didn't have any rules, but it was pretty much just wear your mask and that's kind of it. And, like, don't be in too many groups. And then randomly they were like, Hey, starting like tomorrow, restaurants close at nine thirty. Everything closes at nine thirty, and you can't be out of your house past ten. Yeah, and it's like we have like they're like masks outside, no matter what. Like you can't. Yeah, and it it doesn't make sense because I think their goal is to prevent people from like drinking at bars late, which I get. Like obviously, alcohol for me at least when I was out, I definitely was a little you know more lenient on my COVID caring. Um, <laughs> Not me. I would bring like sanitizer white things and like wipe down my table i, I went to the vineyard this psycho. week uh this summer so uh, again we're from massachusetts so popular oh you went to the vineyard oh chris please <laughs> can please hold on we oh, we have God. another impression we have another impression from the great christopher <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> me 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 me, me. <clears throat> fantastic uh, you went to the vineyard <laughs> how was it did it you was... take the yard out <laughs> after that <laughs> It's Love funny me. because I'm so not I like that. I went to the vineyard. I did. I went to the vineyard. I went to Martha's like Vineyard. <laughs> oh, lovely. I love being racist. <laughs> um, no, I went with all my guy friends. And first of all, dangerous to do that. But I, the they just didn't care. And it was weird because it's still technically part of Massachusetts. But we went into bars. And, like, I mean, obviously, I would wear my mask when I could. But I, I would got drunk. And I, I was, like, su- and this was at the beginning. And I was, like, super paranoid because my parents are older. And I was living with him at the time. Um, and then I, like, was there. And I was like, nah, fuck it. And I ended up, like, it was just, like, regular bar time and, and stuff. And I ended up, like, obviously meeting a bunch of people. But I, anyways, moral of the story is I ended up testing negative. But it was, like, crazy that it was the, still the same state, but no one cared. That's how the Cape was, I feel like, a little bit. I mean, Ooh, I the th- Cape I- now. We're at the Cape. We're in the vi- we're in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, this is great, <laughs> there are guys. summer people here. Like, just Oh, that's right. You also it. use... You also use the noun as a verb, like, we summer in Massachusetts. Hmm. <laughs> I wish we could do that. I know. I wish we could winter somewhere. We summer not. We summer in San Diego. Yeah, where are your, like, I local San Diego vacation summer. spots? San Diego. And then northern Arizona. Half but the but state. You have to, do you have to fly to San Diego? No, it's uh, It's five-hour drive. Oh, that's not that bad. Where but in half San Diego the... do you go? Um, Mission Beach. <gasps> Shut up! I like get out of the city. Shut up! No, I, <laughs> I cannot. I am serious. I have family in Ocean Beach, so get I get out of the city. Can we stay with them? Because I can't. Aff- I can barely afford the gas to get this. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, how please I share. Feel about share that. your family <laughs> connection. That's awesome. Yeah, I love a little small world. I love that area. I think if I had to live on the West Coast, I absolutely hate LA. I think it should be illegal. Um, and well, I think should it be like Canada. Escape from L.A.? Should it put the like should well, on, Snake Plissken come in and on behalf of all the Dodger fans? <clears throat> sorry, okay. <laughs> I, lo- I love the Dodgers. I okay, so let me actually rephrase. I love dodgeball. I don't hate L.A. I just don't understand it. I don't understand how you can have a city that is so large, no public transportation. Like I just don't get that part. Wait, Sir, no would you like to chime in, being from Los Angeles area, Orange um, County? That's probably why I moved many years ago and didn't go back because of the congestion. I, it's just not. I mean, I miss the beach and I miss going to Dodger games and USC games, but there it is so densely populated that I just it's not for me. So yeah. the weather's amazing, and I know I ideally I'd love to live in San Clemente or Oceanside or Carlsbad, but in in northern San Diego County, but. It's just L.A. and Orange County is just, I mean, that's where I grew up, but it's just packed. It's it's just ridiculous. The L.A. traffic alone, just that's a no for me. Yeah, and I drew, I had to drive 45 minutes each way to go to high school because I went to Catholic high school. So it's just, it was brutal. 
but that's what I grew up in. So I didn't know any better. You know, yeah. that's just, that's, uh, that was my life. I didn't get it. How did you end up in Arizona? I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, college to, and you know, to, to escape, you know, my parents and start a new life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We stayed. both went to a college we both hated, but we met there. So it was definitely meant to happen. Oh, we just, yeah, cause, cause I'm a Penn state guy and he's a USC guy. Oh, And, uh, um, you know, and neither goes. of us went to those two colleges, illustrious universities. <laughs> so Penn um, State, I used to go to camp. Uh, have you ever heard of Woodward? Yeah. Yeah. So I used to go to camp at Woodward. So I oh, that's frequent cool. uh, state college. Oh, wow. OK. State college is fun. Yeah. They used to have a place called La Bamba. They had burritos as big as your head. Really? Ooh. And Dev and I, I hate to say it, but being only 24, it was closed before you got there. <laughs> well, it's okay because I like really have not gone back since I was like maybe 17 or 16. Oh, okay. Well, you should go back there. It's really nice. Yeah, I feel like it would be a fun place. vibe now. Yeah, I, for I, sure. I'll be honest, I have no clue what we're talking about. So, uh, State College, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, uh, where that's a town. Well, yeah. Yes, it is. It's yes. called State College. Yeah. It's yes. Like I've never been there, but yes. It's an it absolutely is. wild place, and it's very it, – so it's like you drive through Amish country. Hell, yeah. And we would drive through Amish country yeah. on Sunday going to camp, and we would pass all the Amish people, and they're like little horse and buggies going to church. And it was, like, <laughs> truly amazing. Like, I, it was something I never experienced. Like, Yeah, the yeah. Pennsylvania Dutch are really cool. Yeah. And the, the Mennonites I guess, like, and all that. Yeah, the camp would, like, trade food with, like, the Amish people. Like, I don't really know how it worked. But and, Brendan, well. Pennsylvania has uh, cities known as Intercourse and Bird in Hand. So, like, State College is, like, a normal, like, name for a place. <laughs> I'm, so, I, yeah, that, that is good to know because I, I was really – I thought it was, like, a restaurant. Um, I've only been to <laughs> Pennsylvania twice, and one time it was to be a formal to – like, a, a date to someone's formal, and I thought they liked me and they didn't. And Aww. then the other time – Wait, wait, wait. Nice. Wait, did they ask you? They asked me, and I thought, like... And they didn't like you? No, yeah, it was, like, just... They just friend. like you, but didn't like you like you. Exactly. So I was like, let me just drive seven hours right quick. Um, <laughs> Did you get and... a kiss kiss? Nope. <laughs> no and hand stuff? being 20. <laughs> um, and then one another time. Oh, when I stayed in Camden, New Jersey, and I got shot at because I was in the murder capital of the country. I've been there yeah. a lot. Well, hey, you yeah. know what? You can say you survived. Any any street named Martin Luther King Boulevard, do not uh, just avoid that. It I'm is sure dangerous. My office is it's really odd, but it I've not seen a safe street named that. Well, I was there on a mission trip, and my like missionary or whatever you call her, she accidentally didn't get us a van, and she got us a pimped out Escalade with blacked out windows. No. So as you can imagine, we were quite the uh attraction yes yes it was hard to not make a statement whenever we pulled up anywhere and did you uh, oh, but the big question is did you convert anyone <laughs> no weirdly enough it had nothing to do with like religion because i don't do that <laughs> but i like okay. that's, went that's because cool. i wanted to like be helpful and then uh yeah the the, the god stuff i kind of just Oh, it's like to help like food for the homeless and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was definitely some God undertones that I just in in one ear out the other. Do you want to plug them? Are they <laughs> are they a good organization? If, if they um, do good things, I don't. We don't care. No, no, it was literally just my church. Um, oh, the, very the cool. organizations. Uh, I don't necessarily remember what they were called um, because they were they there weren't like we didn't work with like hardcore organizations. We worked with like failing independent things um yeah. like i totally sad. i i'm with you i get i get yeah you, 100%. Sad. yeah it was a super sad time i mean i was 17 um but it was super sad but it was like really nice it definitely shaped my personality going forward i remember we did this one thing which is actually pretty cool um they gave us three dollars because like on average uh like a food stamp recipient gets three dollars per day like a dollar per meal wow and for, really like, three days we had to eat our meals with just like you know three dollars a day and like we could collaborate with like up to three people and i literally just ate carrots and peanut butter and wheat bread like every day and then it ended up being too that it was like much easier to buy unhealthy like really gross food for you um and then this went into this whole thing about like food deserts and how there's so it no gave you like a uh, perspective about it oh for sure i mean especially when i was like seven i i always i mean obviously i, like, I grew up in a family that i'm like obviously super privileged um 
but I definitely have always been um, into like charity work and, and service work when I can. And that like really made me realize the things that I was doing, I could do more of and I can be better at it um, because it's so easy to think you're helping when really you're just posting something on social media or really you're just like being an advocate, which is important, but like there are, there are a lot of issues that are harder to like unpack and you can easily help I, I don't know if that makes sense but you know what i'm saying wow yeah, yeah absolutely. that's amazing about you every and every, every uh, oh my god english should be <laughs> nice every day i know yeah How it's meaningful. weird i'm like such a dick all the time but then i randomly have like a soft spot okay no brendan is literally the nicest person i've ever encountered <laughs> and he's like i'm such a dick and i'm like no you're like truly like not shut up why do you say that you're a dick I don't know. I think that's... if you like, you were giving food to homeless people. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like that doesn't necessarily equate to. Um, I don't know. I'm not like a dick. I think like that's part of. No, I think it's part like, of my branding, you know. Or is that just figuratively? Like, oh my god, I'm sorry. That was so bossy. I'm a dick. And I'm like, no, you were like, you know me. I don't care. <laughs> and like, I'm a people pleaser. What can I say? Yeah, and it's kind of like, and I think that's why you think you're an asshole. Oh, all right. Sorry. I guess I'm not a dick. No, you're not. <laughs> the more you so know shut up <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are cool i'd like to get into how we kind of connected on this because I, I don't know that i want to know there's an interesting story there's two interesting stories one brandon you and i have a weird connection because the first artist i mentioned is like you literally flipped out when we kind of yeah, did like you a off real quick it's conversation bro- boy crush it is i know total man crush um yeah will so- wheaton <laughs> look alike no no it's will wheaton's look alike oh, we have oh. to tell him about the instagram the other day what like we have to tell him about what we did to quinn's instagram oh yeah that's right oh my god that is such a good story so all right all right, all right Brent, so brandon paint out the picture because you you tweeted like a general tweet and we'll yeah. go from there so I'll, I'll back it up so as i was saying before you know now i guess i should also explain the podcast so <laughs> After the whole radio thing, COVID hit, um, and I was let go from my job, and I quickly moved to Montana just for a minute, <laughs> and then I came back, and it was in Montana where I was like, okay, you idiot, because for a second, I was I was thinking of going back to school for school psychology, which is hilarious now, because it's like, no. what? I've literally <laughs> only done media my whole life. Why am I doing school psychology? But anyways, um, I come back, and I'm like, all right, we got to go gung-ho. Like, I know what I want to do with my life, and it's restart something in the music industry. So Dev and I were talking because obviously I knew I wanted to work with Devin because truthfully, and I'm not even just saying this because you're here, Devin. I know you're, you're looking like CeeLo Green right now in your, in your brown jumpsuit. But um, <laughs> I, I was like, I need to work with Devin because Devin is one of the best people that I've ever worked with because we're like really good friends, but also really good like professional we yeah we click in a way i've never clicked professionally with someone as well as personally it's just awesome so we were talking about what we can do and at first we were thinking of like booking artists but i think we kind of forgot about the fact that the world was shut down and <laughs> artists weren't fucking performing we anywhere were like, let's just do a show we'll do it at your brother's bar and like we'll get <laughs> this blah 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 and then we can like we can start, and that like, killed us too yeah i we mean like... woodsy and i woodsy and i are avid concert goers i mean that was <laughs> yeah. huge stuff chris is woodsy in case you didn't know oh yeah that's that guy the guy, <laughs> the guy. I, I figured yeah i mean like the whole industry shut down and like even from yeah, a local perspective way to rub it in i was so literally on tour when everything shut down <laughs> Who were you on? T- were you on tour with somebody pretty big? Um, I was on tour with um an Irish singer who had who is really making his way um in the United States, and I tell everyone like I love I've not had a bad experience with any of the artists that I've worked with, um, but I was like if I could only tour for him and work for him the rest of my life, I would. Do was that. it Kennedy or McDermott or was it? Somebody yeah, it was Dermot Kennedy. Oh, it was okay. Look at that. Oh my god, that was like that was yeah. House fucking, yeah. I told you guys I was psychic on the last time. Wait, do you listen to his music? Uh, I I do actually. Yes, I could probably sing it pretty decently as well. Oh, Ooh, send send us that dot. Yeah, I, got, well, I got the serious. Mark, I got the serious. Mark used to be a yeah, singer. well, I like I obviously I don't really like naming my artists um and everything just because of like relationships and it's like i work for them so i always feel awkward but i at the end of the day i think he is the best artist to work for um or like one of the best artists to work for he's just so down to earth and 
amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. So um, let's loop it back because we should have called our show Tangents because we always go on <laughs> crazy little side things. Uh, so, Brandon, you were you were shut down. You yep. wanted to work with, with Devin. Yes. And so you uh, put this together, right? Yeah. So we were like, it randomly, the conversation just randomly ended and we're like, podcast. <laughs> well, okay. So I was a guest host. So I don't do anything on air. Like I've always been behind the scenes. I think there's one recording from when I was like six and my sister was five and it was the Christmas Eve and my dad was in radio um, majority of my life. And it's me and my sister in the studio and one of our family friends is like doing an air check. And that is the one time I've been behind a mi microphone and I was seven. <laughs> and then I was a guest host on Brendan's because I was like, you know, what? I just kind of want to do it. Like, I was like, if you ever need a host, like I'll do it with you. I don't really care. I don't know what I'm doing and I'll sound like trash. And I still sound like trash. <laughs> and that was a quick sell for me. <laughs> like, sounds good. And I was like, I still sound like trash. But okay, yes, I easy, will. Devin. Here's, here's <laughs> she's like, fishing, just, guys. She's like, fishing for compliments over here. I sound no, like no, trash. No. Like I Come just, on. I have, you have a, a very pleasant tone. I just have a very young voice. Um, it's very high pitched. When I was in high school, my friends would call me squeaks. Like, <laughs> and that's just life. And like, I've come to terms with it. I don't care. Um, but I just sound like trash. <laughs> yeah, no, you do. You're right. <laughs> wow. Hey, you get an agreement from your co-host. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like high I'm praise like right there. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so moral of the story we decided to do, we bring the podcast back to life and i forgot to mention that we have a coinciding spotify playlist so i used to work at sony music um in college and when i was working with them like we got to work with a bunch of like newly signed artists so i would always add them to like a playlist on spotify because i knew like spotify playlists were like gonna be the new radio and i started creating like I keep saying, like, I started curating a playlist and I kept getting a lot of followers. So it ended up blowing up and I changed the name to Music You're Missing to go along with the podcast. So we had a meeting about, like, restarting the podcast and we eventually restarted Music You're Missing and we restarted the playlist as well. And this time we added it on Apple Music. And I forget the original question, but that is, that culminates our experience We're at least about with Queen the... Okay, perfect. <laughs> so, basically, uh, wait, wait. so what was, what was the original tweet? That Mark made. Okay, that's yes. what we're okay, going to get to. There we go. So How now, you reached out. Because we want to, what we've learned is we've had a really supportive, we found a lot of positivity in the Twitterverse when you look for positivity and yeah. the podcast community as a whole. So one time I legitimately asked for podcast recommendations. Like I literally was like, does anyone have any podcast recommendations? And I got like 300 texts. I mean, 300 tweets. Because it was probably one of ours. Devin's having a, a malfunction or hair is stuck to her microphone right now um <laughs> i don't have that problem he didn't tell me i looked crazy <laughs> i hope you guys oh, are you back to being a dick i've been mad at you so um i tweeted that thing out i got like 300 tweets back and i again so this is me just thinking that i'm an asshole i literally listened to all 300 podcasts and i wrote everyone a personalized dm complimenting them wait, <laughs> wow wait wow <laughs> Wow, Literally. that's amazing! You that's so it. impressive. I I, I I am so busy. And, I can't. I try, man. I try to listen to everyone. No, and the thing is, is, I was a senior in college at the time. Like I had other shit to do, but I was like, no, I'll do this now. Uh, and I ended up because I did that. I ended up getting like a lot of traction from that, and a lot of people wanted to collab and all that stuff. So then I knew that um, the hashtag, not even the hashtag, like if you just search podcast recommendations on Twitter, I knew that kind of linked you to a community of podcasters within Twitter. Um, and basically what I did now that we were like responsible <laughs> for our own marketing and such, I tweeted out something like looking for people to collaborate with. Cause we were like it, anyone who is listening that is a podcaster. And I'm sure you guys know it's, if you can work with another podcast and you guys fit, it's such good. Uh, you're leveraging each other's fan bases. It's really yeah, it's good karma, and it's really, the most in a weird fun. way. It's not like it's not a force. Like this is fun, and it's also you know we're promoting our stuff. Um, but anyways, I found that was like a good way to connect to other podcasters. I tweeted something like, "Hey, fellow podcasters, like let's work together." Hashtag podcast recommendations. <laughs> and in like point zero zero three seconds, you responded, and I was like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. Yours came up right as I was doing it, and I'm gonna admit, I 
I troll the podcast recommendations because we are nobodies or we, at least in this space, we're zeros, right? Like we, we don't know, we don't have any kind of base. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying. So we had to self-promote, you yeah. know? I mean, and it, yours popped up. Yeah. It, that is such a good way to do it. And like I, like I was saying before, when I was in college, that's how, what I did. And a, a lot of people listen because of that. And there's, that's, a, that's, you're just leveraging, you know, things that are out there for free and that are accessible. I think that's a really great strategy. So you sent out the tweet. I responded pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. And then I very quickly listened to your episodes. I saw that it was kind of deep, which I like because I, I know it's, you know, knocked, con- uh, knocked conscious. And I'm a pretty deep man, specifically the past two years. Has... Deep down, Brendan's really deep, but like, I'm just not. And <laughs> I don't ever see that part. So when we do stuff like this, I'm like, oh, Brendan, shit's getting real. Like... Yeah, that's right. You are seeing me in a new light sometimes. Yeah, it kind of he gives money to out. the homeless and now this. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I know. And I was like, dude, yeah, this could be cool. Like whether we get deep or not, like let's do it. And then we've been chatting and now here we are. Yeah, and it, it was so cool because we, you know, we we got on the phone and then we did like kind of a test, right? We're with both of you yeah. and myself, and we had talked about artists, right? And that's where it really became this kind of synchronistic thing. Yeah, so I mean, two I, years ago, what happened two years ago that got you quote unquote deeper? Um, Is, do you want to share that? We yeah, I mean, that. I just like went through, not even went through. I just think I grew up. Um, and just like kind of i'm trying to think of like the exact moment i li- went to school near a lot of mountains <laughs> <laughs> and i definitely like really enjoyed nature and when you really enjoy nature it's hard to get other people to enjoy that with you um especially because i would always like make it in my class schedule that i had many days off so i just started hanging out with myself a lot more uh and i eventually got into like yoga in in that aspect of life um and it really opened up a whole chapter uh not even like a whole section of my personality that i didn't know because i i never was alone before and now i love being alone um and then also like i don't know everyone just has like their struggles with like their mental health and whatever and just trying and like once you conquer that you really just have a greater sense of knowing who you are well said for sure yeah Yeah, i mean i've i had a five year mine happened five years ago and we'll probably talk Maybe we'll do another one of these and I'll share that one because it's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, I'd definitely but, like to hear uh, it. Maybe when I'm a little yeah. less three glasses of wine in. <laughs> I was just going to say three glasses is appropriate for the story. Yeah, some oh. of the stories are ridiculous. But um, I applaud you for sure. Your your take on nature. I, I mean, I'm an avid backpacker, hiker, camper. So some of the best moments of my life have been at 9,000 feet sitting in a meadow just doing nothing and listening to a stream. Oh, and for I, you know, sure. I, I totally applaud you for for taking time to take care of yourself thank you yeah i mean when covid hit i was so i was honestly like at the peak of but i say the peak of my career it's not like i was you know anything special but i was just i just like lined up a few speaking gigs it's just hard Uh, because i feel like when covid hit we were just starting to find ourselves like in our careers and i was getting a good blend of who i actually was as a person and mixing it with like my radio persona and social social media presence for fucking once and like (laughs) booking a lot of speaking gigs for things that i actually cared about and then you were on tour with an artist that you loved and then covid hit and we were like oh shit i went home to my parents house and i was like I like I'm gonna just sit in my room and cry for like the next two months because (laughs) I mean I'm sure it's the same for Brendan but like the only thing I've wanted to do my whole entire 23 years of life is tour like I just growing up like concerts were my thing like my dad was in the radio industry like I said and he would have like two big concerts a year and instead of going to the concerts like normal little kids would i was like dad can i work them and, <laughs> and she I... did and she like she didn't like <laughs> low-key work them she legitimately like had responsibilities at them too like i would like i would handle the tickets and like the box office runs and like by the time i was like 15 i was wrangling artists and that's so cool like doing this like one-on-one stuff and i was like so i was like shit i'm finally like where i am in my career like grown like going to college i was like i don't need college like what i want to do like i could have just skipped college and like Mm. gone straight to touring and it was like finally get a time because i think when you tour you have to be like ready mentally like i remember i was 
before, like a few weeks before I went on tour, um, I was working a show at the Garden, and the company that I ended up like touring with, they hired me for like a one-off show, um, because with VIP stuff, um, when tours come, they like will hire VIP assistants for like a show, and it was a two-show, um, two-night show, two-night show <laughs> in Boston, and I was like doing stuff um in the td garden and i'm only five two <laughs> and they <laughs> and they made me put up like a 10 foot backdrop and i had to carry like 50 like 50 pound poles that are like steel Jeez. and i was like i'm not like a big person i remember really like, going home that night and like crying and i was like i am not cut out to tour like my whole entire life and then the next day i was like okay i'm ready to take this on and i think like <laughs> You have to, like, mentally know what you're doing. And it's, like, living on a tour bus with people that you've never met in your entire life. Like, like I went on and would intimate. live with, like... A lot of different age groups 11, in there, too. Yeah, I would live with 11 strangers who have been touring together for years. And I was just a 22-year-old getting thrown into it. And so I That's think... That's impressive. Yeah, so I was, like, I think that is, like, a very big aspect of my life and like i was finally excited to do it and then covid hit and i was finally getting the hang and so yeah that happened <laughs> yeah and you took the more sadder route i moved to montana and was <laughs> going back to the mountains i was one with the mountains oh i just hid in my room i was like i'm so miserable i hate this i don't want to be here but yeah now we're here, and I like, don't yeah. hate my life And as speaking much. of tangent, I still have yet to. <laughs> well, yeah, so we're here. And then. Uh, I, wait, hang on. I'd uh, like to point out that that tangent was not our fault, Mark. No, it was that's not. That's the first time that's ever happened. First time. So, yay they're, us. They're have generally you... self initiated. I'll high five so, you on uh, that, sir. Yeah. Me and Brendan, they're generally self initiated. Me and Brendan have the attention spans of peanuts. Yeah, we really. So, like, we'll be like having a business Squirrel. conversation, and then, like, one second we'll be talking about, like, what color the sky is and like if it's raining or not like but you know yeah, what that's like podcast to another i'm all, like tangents are great because only when they create like actual good conversation i feel like what you just said devin good conversation sometimes absolutely, absolutely. Yes. artists will get into a tangent like when we interview them and i'm like oh, i know i have to cut this out later <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Whoa." laughs> you can cut you out feel... my tangent feel free that's no very, no not at all no deep. we i'm not kidding i'm not joking when i tell you we do not edit we oh, do God. not edit ever because Dude, I wish there's so <laughs> the thing is, the thing is there's so much learned in the conversation. We're going to stick our foot in our mouths. We're going to do it. And the best way to address it is, Hey bro, you just said something that didn't sound right. And then we address it. We, we work it out and then we move forward learn right? from it during move the on. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely like, I think we learn individually when things go <laughs> wrong in the interview. It's just that some of our artists are not media trained or like are oh, <laughs> I they're artists. Name. They do not. Yeah. They're we not cerebral about it. They do, feel right. Yeah. You know, it's, just, it was like, am I, should I say, am I allowed to say it? We, I don't know. I don't not know. we previously, not for this podcast, I interviewed an artist and their attention span just was not there. And we, I think we got about two hours of recorded content and I had to condense it into like a 25 minute episode. Wow. It was like um, sayonara to everything you just said. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. No, it was kind of funny. Anyhow, so, 92. Yeah. <laughs> so we get back to, so we, we, you and I have a conversation. Devin, uh, I may, I, talk to you for the first time or we're just having a conversation yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I like artists like Quinn 92. Right. I mean, I, that's the first artist I spit out. And Brendan and just about shit his pants. I did. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> because, okay. Quinn 92. <laughs> <laughs> Poop. I'm glad that, that With excitement. I did. And then I did. And I didn't even just about, I actually <laughs> did. Um, and <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, it was weird, man, because no offense, like you're not, first of all, he's not that big. Second of all, you're not really in his like key demographic. So for you to say that, I was like, what? Like, that's just I, so random. I'm not going to lie. Like it popped into my head. It's one of those things. Yeah. And it was the first one. And I listen to him every morning when I make my coffee, I put on uh, Spotify. Uh, this is Quinn 92. I love that. So yeah, no I joke. Mean, he was honestly one of the really big, um, like, I want to say like inspirations for my whole like pursuance into the music industry especially because 
so I yeah, so we both know Quinn Eddie too. Um, but <laughs> I have had a lot of weird experiences with him, um, which I will detail. But <laughs> in terms of him like really jump starting my career, it started when this dude came up to me like at a party. I was hanging out with my friends from Northeastern. And he was like, hey, you look like Quinn 92. I'm like, I have absolutely no clue who that is. And I looked him up and I'm like, oh, shit, like I kind of do look like him. And then I started listening to his music. Specifically, Another Day in Paradise was the first song I heard from him. You right. Know Great track? song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, absolutely. Unreal track. So I think that was. Bum, like... bum, 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 bum. Yes. Yes. What did you just do? Did I you just, just shoot your pants again? <laughs> I just dropped. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. You dropped. I dropped my microphone. <laughs> and, Sorry. Um, so that really just made me, you know, on a journey. And then to see someone's career um, just kind of blow up, but still, you know, he's still low key, but it blew up like in front of my eyes was really cool. Uh, and it made me realize that a lot of industry things are possible. Um, so I really followed his career a lot. And I definitely stole a lot of his style going at, at especially during my peak 21 22 years when i thought i was the shit you're like zoom ass yeah mm -hmm. are you wearing yellow pajamas right now <laughs> <laughs> honestly today we didn't quint it out but the color later, black yeah. we have a photo shoot after this and i'm not lying i based like two of the outfits <laughs> off of um his his instagram so <laughs> that's awesome but yeah my my story with quinn is when I was doing music, you're missing, like I would just try to create content on the side. And I created this um, like album reaction to from Michigan with love when it first came out on YouTube and werewolves like my favorite song. Oh, oh my God. So here's another story. Um, okay. I was working at Sony. Oh, oh, double tangent. I love it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I was working at Sony at the time and they brought me on like a conference and it was around uh, October and werewolf I think came out either late October or early November and they were like, oh, we have some like artists, uh, songs that we want to show you that are coming out soon. And Quinn is signed to Columbia. And I got to hear the record before it was even, even announced, which was so cool. And um, Werewolf was the first track I heard. And I ended up looking up Yoshi Flower. And I became a big fan of his as well. We're trying to get him on the podcast, which would be really cool. <laughs> he just hasn't cool. come out with any like content lately. Uh, or not content, music. Um, so it doesn't really align. Content, music, it's all the same now. Come on, Too it's shed. just entertainment, right? Um, but I made that video. And I think you know, whatever he was touring at the time, because a new album just came out. And I traditionally either worked concerts for one of the stations I was working for in Boston, or for Sony, this specific show, I could have worked both. Because he was pop, I could have just like not worked, but I could have done social for them. Uh, and then Sony, I could have like done, uh, we basically had to go to Sony shows and, and just like analyze the artists and the crowd reactions and just make up a report and whatnot. Um, but I was like, nope, no, 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 I'm not doing, I'm not working. I'm going to the show as a fan. I'm buying VIP. I don't care. I know I'm like, whatever old I am, I don't have any money, but I'm putting on my credit card and I show up the, like, I literally walk in me and my two friends and he's doing a Q and A. He stops the Q and A. He looks at me and I'm like, what, what's going on? And he's like, are you, are you like, do you have a YouTube channel? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, did you like make a, a reaction video to my album? I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, do you want to like hang out after the show? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then I did. And I was so awkward. I was so awkward with him. And my roommate and I at the time had a joke about mug root beer, which is so dumb. And the only thing I could say to him, because I walked in his uh, dressing room. Oh, time out. There's nothing dumb about root beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait until you hear what I said. And then you might, you might think <laughs> otherwise. I looked at him and I saw his mug root beer. And I go, is that mug root beer? Clearly. I mean, it was a can of mug root beer. I was like, is that mug root beer? And he's like. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. No, I'm just, that's. That's one of our phrases where it's like the Captain Obvious. Thing, oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. I be honest with you? No, lie to me, right? Yeah. No, exactly. I say it to Chris all the time and he's like, no, lie to me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you got me again. Like that, I'm dude. dumb. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, it's mug root beer. And I was like, yeah, what gave it away? <laughs> I was like, that's what the, I would have said, actually. The huge dog that literally says mug. So that's why he didn't answer our Instagram. Yeah, so then it was a long, so I ended up hanging out with him backstage. It, it Did you share the mug root beer joke with a, him? 
I didn't because it, it didn't really have a punchline other than the fact that we called our other roommate the dog from Mungarupio for no reason. We just like <laughs> called him that. And so it would so, have just gotten way more awkward. Yeah, it would have, exactly. It would have been way more Yeah, awkward. that sounds like it would have gotten a little more awkward. Exactly. And his fiance sure. was there. So this is the thing. Whenever I meet an artist that I actually like, I'm so awkward with them. The Dua Lipa? Oh, my God. I met Dua Lipa. So awkward. She touched me with, like, the tip of her, like, middle finger. And I was like, ah, help. And I mean, then... she's also, like, a goddess. So she is. Like... A... Oh, she's so pretty. And then when I met Casey Musgraves, I told her that I got high and I saw a ghost that talk to no, me you one of her DM'd songs her. <laughs> oh that is she didn't mean back i talked to her on dms i know but it doesn't get, that cool. doesn't make it sound so, better <laughs> so yeah one time i messaged casey musgraves because i was listening to this song <laughs> and moral of the story like it was a weird relation to my mom's mom who i never met i had a dream about and then like that name came up into her in her song but it wasn't even part of the lyrics like it literally came through my speakers but it was not in the song because i know the song and i listened to it back but i like i saw it because my speakers also light up to like the waveforms of the audio um and it was really weird and i like dm'd her because i was like what the fuck i need to dm her like i just need i need to tell her just in case <laughs> and she saw it and we started dming about it and then like months later i saw her at a concert and i was like yo i was the dude who dm'd you like i was a little high but i swear like it was real <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you saw ghosts and then you know ufos a couple of aliens i love that story man i don't care yeah, right. you know, it's, I love that you like played hooky from work in oh, the yeah. music industry to hang out to see Quinn in the music industry. And it was so worth it because it was one of the best shows I went to from an actual, you know, listener's perspective. And then obviously because I got the, you know, front row VIP experience, <laughs> it was also amazing. But it truly was like the energy of the show was awesome. The crowd was so jam packed, uh, and but it it was a type of jam packed where it wasn't overwhelming. I feel like a yeah. lot of the times I'm at a concert and it's just like over freaking whelming, especially if I don't like the sh the artist that much. Oh my but god! When you Some love an so artist, stressful. like you yeah. could punch. I've me in seen the face him. And I like it. I've seen him at two venues in Phoenix. Which were, what which ones? tours? Shows. Uh, Crescent Ballroom and uh, the Van Buren are oh, the two. Okay. Which tours? Those are the two. I don't remember the tour. Uh, it would have been after. A story of us, I think. Okay, it was probably story of us. Was the last time I saw him. So possibly. Wh what were your thoughts on his newest album? I love it. I love the acoustic renditions. I'm an acoustic guy because okay. I'm a big, big vocal guy. And coffee's great. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they're all they're all really good. And I love second time around. I mean, it's really heartfelt. Yeah. He's de I. I don't. I'm not a super fan, so I don't know the reference of Stacy, but she's in every. Song. yeah honestly i i don't really even get that either and i love stay i love the song stacy mm -hmm. the problem is i have my last ex was stacy oh and i love megzy so i've replaced stacy with megzy in all the songs when i, I like sing that. Them. that good and good. i have to because megzy is my megzy i love her oh yeah, yeah. i wasn't a fan of the <laughs> album chris laughs at me as i well look, look at on him your face was as like you turned into my, a four-year-old <laughs> it's yeah. funny i can't I, I, I love her she's great Ugh. so she can call me megzy or she can call me love <laughs> she can call me any all of the above so uh what what how about you what are your thoughts on it i, I mean we I, could totally I, dissect song by song if you want yeah i mean honestly I, i'm a huge fan but this album just did not do it for me um there were a few tracks that i really liked i really loved the one with ash um sleep while i drive but the other yeah. ones i mean the song am, am i high right now was so good until black bear came in and i was like oh gosh i love black bear that uh, was so fun it was funny though it, yeah um yeah sorry but i on. get it though i feel like he's transitioned to this this part where like i'm a big for example gavin DeGraw fan yeah you get me like john bellion stupid deep acoustic Ooh. you know where it's all just the vocals uh it's ridiculous so that like i liked edwin mccain prior to the i'll be craze when he was still like nobody you know and it's it's crazy how like songs just resonate with people and i feel like this quinn 92 album resonates with me in the heartfelt way mm -hmm. where it's more like the other ones are just fun like you know pack up your shit and drive like it's so great you know yeah i definitely think the, um this album he attempted to I, at least it, i think he definitely tried to get a little bit more deeper with this album but i actually think the way that i listen to it I just feel like he was trying a little 
too hard to be deep and it sometimes it felt a little inauthentic especially when you go back to some of his tracks from from michigan with love like the song sad still was a perfect example of like talking about um his like anxiety or struggles with anxiety without being like hi guys like this song because i'm talking about anxiety if that makes sense i just think from like an industry perspective so many people are trying to hop on this mental health anxiety train that yeah. a lot of the times i have a hard time um taking it seriously are you familiar with love oh yeah yes. i saw oh, i saw him. him at jingle ball yep oh did you okay i saw him at the fillmore in philadelphia oh wait if you're familiar I have with been... the fillmore I think I want to say. Oh no, I did a show at the Met. Okay. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. Okay, yeah, the Met. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely familiar with that. Um, uh, but uh, Love was is big into mental health, and it's like, it's sometimes it's so challenging to like vet like the true people who feel that way. You know what I mean? Because oh, we sure. all feel. I mean, like, well, because so when you say something way. once and it you get a good reaction from it, you're gonna continue saying you know, whatever that subject may be, you're going to, yeah, you're going to, you're going to strike that, you know, strike while the iron is hot or yeah. ride And it's that like, wave. at what point is it, uh, you know, uh, organic? Like, is this things that are, you're actually saying, or are you just saying it now? Conditioned uh, to say, right? Exactly. And I, and yeah. it, it's very obvious, like, especially, I mean, being trained and going through this for me, at least, I feel like I can tell when it's inauthentic and when it is, um, kind of forced as well one of my new favorite songs which you guys have never heard because it's metal is called i am broken too and the lead singer and the guy that wrote the song tattooed i am broken too on his forearm because he's now such that's a commitment big... exactly like, so I when you said that. is it is his is his frame of mind about mental health real or not that's the first thing i thought of jesse leach is he a real proponent of mental health and mental health awareness the dude tattooed the song title on his forearm yeah it, and i, I mean, was like yeah, holy dedication. crap and it's like and this, branded bro if he made and, some form of art or whatever that he's so passionate in that he would get it tattooed on his body permanently yeah like that, i believe that a lot and and hearing the song live a year ago and reading the lyrics it speaks to me and it, it invokes an emotional response and that is the power of art and music and i just love that Exactly. And again, like, I feel like, um, speaking of like music has power, there are some times where yes. you hear music about things that, uh, you know, are hot right now. Like, for example, the, I don't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to live today. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was good because it was, logic was kind of low key at the time mm -hmm. blew up. And then that's a, a scenario of, okay, well you found success in this Avenue of rapping about suicide. So now you are the suicide artist. And like, that is how the industry really kind of. Yeah. They pigeonhole works. you. Yeah, you get exactly. labeled. I mean, you have to be labeled. So for me, even if whatever logic is saying, and I, I know that I'm, I'm, you know, not right. I'm just saying like, as a listener, this is just the way I feel. Whatever logic says after that, I'm like, mm, it's hard to uh, believe. Yeah. It. Because I'm like, you found a lot of success with this, which was a great and moving song. But then I'm like, I don't know what I can believe going forward. And that's right. just me as a listener. I totally understand other people like don't give a shit. But like, I don't know. I just think like stuff like that where it is blowing up right now, it's just hit or miss with me. Well, Brandon, it sounds you were talking about going deeper. I mean, Chris and I have basically our our podcast is what we would do if we just hang out anyway. Yeah. We just yeah. happen to put microphones in front of our faces. We had the conversations like this years and years and years ago that lasted five hours at a, at a stupid Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> yeah. For real. We shut a place down and they're like, are you guys leaving? Are you like, idiots going to leave now, please? Dissertation. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so we go deep for sure. And like, to your point, I think you, you kind of do that same thing where you kind of look behind the veil of like, yeah, how can I trust certain things? You kind of go in, cautious i mean you want to be optimistic but you're yeah. cautiously optimistic about what the message truly is and or what their agenda is right or their thought process for sure and but i also kind of struggle sometimes because i feel like i just naturally want to take a critical approach to a lot of things and i feel like sometimes things are authentic <laughs> and it's weird because i mean sometimes people are authentic in ways that you aren't so it's hard to believe but i mean th yeah. other people are different yeah, it is. I mean, we're all, we, you know, we all have kind of base things, but then we have some unique people that step out of that box and they just do things differently. And that Pretty is awesome. when I find some of my favorite artists. <laughs> yeah. So 
that was synchronous for me. Like the Queen 92 thing just popping in my head talking about that was I knew that we had to get do something, right? Put something together. Oh, for sure. But but then Devin, when we started talking with you, mm -hmm. you shared something about an artist from the 80s. And I have not told Chris anything. <laughs> I have not told him a single word. But you were on tour with this person and Chris and I knew then ultimately that this definitely was a synchronous event and we had to do something together. So you know me, I don't like um saying the artist's name or giving away too much personal um information just because i respect their privacy and everything so you are more than welcome to tell chris away from the mic and we can talk about it i just don't want to say the name oh you don't want to say is it okay should if we... i say the name or no yeah i mean okay, I just... I don't want to should, we, should we mute our mics well how or... about this i'm gonna ask chris uh, i'm gonna ask chris the question how okay. about that we'll do it this Go. way chris you had you had a uh, a vehicle that uh, suffered an accident. It was totaled <laughs> at one point. Oh, uh, mother trucker! Go ahead. No, please face. share your story. What happened? My stupid Volvo. Uh, it must be because I think that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, and what? you're going to ask me what song was playing? Yeah, what were you What were you listening to, buddy? Stupid Cradle of Love by Stupid Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> And I understand that Devin may have tore Billy Idol, but we're not talking smack about it. No, just... allegedly she may okay. have. Alleged, Your favorite allegedly. word, allegedly. Allegedly, yes. So, so I was, um, so the tour was a dual headliner, even though my artist was always on second. Um, and so that was my first tour. Billy Idol was a part of it. And then, and then um, so it was crazy because I never thought I would get started with an 80s rock band or a 80s rock artist. Yeah. Um, but honestly, it was amazing getting into that side of the music industry with someone who is so experienced with a team they've had for so long. That's so awesome. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is his hair amazing in person as it is on TV? <laughs> Billy Idol's? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and God. um what is Steve Stevens? <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I really hair, had nothing to hair. do with him. Uh but it was definitely interesting to see cuz I have grown up um like going to I've been to more shows than I could even count. I cannot tell you my first concert like just nothing. So if you had to guess how many shows have you been to? Like 300 400. I would say I would say more. <laughs> okay. Um, because that doesn't even include the ones that I've worked and right the, in like so when we were working, we would probably work. I mean, you work more than me, and I'd probably work like four a week. Wow! Holy crap! Especially during the during summer. the summer, yeah. During this, not like during it's like season. being a restaurant manager. Well, yeah. and, it's like so endless hours. One summer, I worked for um one of the largest concert promoters in the city of Boston. And so I would do probably five shows a week for them. Jeez. And I would go and I would run press and I would, I was a marketing and PR intern. So I did, I went, there was one summer I want to say I went to like at least 30 shows. That's not including I heart ones. I have every single pass. Oh, Cause yeah. I would have to like go and I would stay for the first three songs and, I could stay if I wanted to. I could leave if I wanted to. But I had That's to go awesome. to every show. It's funny. Like, you can tell, like, how much uh, concerts sometimes wear on you because I was literally at the Beyonce concert and I had front row tickets. I'm like, no, nah, I got to go. <laughs> like, I'm not staying for this one. <laughs> literally, it just, like, I love concerts. And I don't know if I will. I think I just like the atmosphere. Like, I, like, that Live Nation job i was like a seasonal assistant and i have seen so many artists that i would just never expect to see and so many different types of music that i would be like oh i would never go to one of those shows and like i love them like sticks all time one of my favorite shows hall and oats absolutely loved like mm -hmm. <laughs> david byrne he walked around with like 
a brain. And I was like, what David is Byrne this? is and so no shoes. Cool. Oh, yeah. No shoes. Totally and naked suit. man, totally nude. Literally. And <laughs> I was on, like, talking this heads, is not man, something I want to go to. And I was like, holy shit. Like, that was an amazing show. Mm-hmm. Sticks with the, the piano that like spins around. Yeah. Um, I think I did like, I just, I, I had to see a lot of shows and I think that job every day because I'm like, I would have never, it's, I don't want to say that I would never go see them on my own, but I would never like actually like willingly see them again. Like those are all artists I would like to see again. And it's just like at the end of the day, live music is live music and everyone has different appreciation for it. And you can see, like, how, like, it's just nice to see people love the artists you're seeing and the environment around them. Definitely. What, what, I could not, I could not agree more. And I'm a psycho concert guy. And (laughs) I, I follow my favorite bands around the country because that's my, I, I save up money every paycheck and I take my vacation. I follow, hey, what are you doing for your vacation? Oh, I'm going to Albuquerque and Vegas and LA. To see my favorite band, uh, I am well aware. That's of what those I do. People, that those are awesome. the type of people on the road I deal with, and like, I absolutely love them. And there was one artist, and people would tent out for her, and I'm still in touch with like a lot of her VIPs and like loyal fans. And they would tent out. It, we were in like Madison, Wisconsin, and there was a lot of snow, and it was literally in the middle of a blizzard. And then these people were. Just sleeping in tents and You know, I get a hotel. <laughs> no, well they like they have to like queue up and everything and like if you lose your spot, you lose your spot, you are gone. Oh, okay. Like they want to be the first people in the venue and I'm like, I wish I loved someone that much and like I wish I had that much dedication to an artist or like even to a person, a friend, a family member. <laughs> but like and honestly I think it's inspiring at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm old enough where I'm and short enough where I'm going to get a seat. <laughs> I'm not going to get cuz I love a metalhead, so I'm I'm too old and too short to get into a pit anymore, you know? So I'm going to get a seat where I can actually see the band and I like to watch the drummers, so yeah. but my favorite thing in the world hands down is when the high, the house lights go off. And I know my favorite band is going to go on in the next 90 seconds. Oh, it's that the feeling, best feeling. The electricity in the air, and I've been waiting nine months. I've had that ticket in my hand for nine months, <laughs> and I know the place is going to explode. That anticipation is amazing. I, uh, I just love it. Yeah, it kind of goes dead silent, and everyone's standing up, and they're like, "Yep." You like the energy and the excitement is just it fills the room or venue. Yep. Or... The in, the intro music comes on, and everyone is just you could just feel it. It's just it's amazing. Oh, exactly. And that's also why I like I like live albums when the recording's good and you can feel the electricity of the crowd on the recording. And that's rare to capture yeah. that night and to capture the energy of the people there. That's oh, I just love that. Yes. When you can re- re- when you can re live that moment again is the best. Yesterday I I know that you guys I uh, haven't set up for Christmas yet because it is, in fact, only the second week of November. But yeah. <laughs> I did do that, and I listened to a vinyl of Elvis live. Um, he had like a Christmas show. I don't even know when or where, um, but it was his live Christmas show, and it was so uh, like it was just unreal to listen to that. And while decorating in like my first mm-hmm. apartment ever with like my roommates, it was just like a very uh, I don't know. I could just feel the energy of the crowd, and it like was inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> That is very cool. I mean, I, I got to give you a lot of credit. I mean, that that is super cool, man. I dig that. Yeah, I, I have to when I, I have to look at it and and try to figure out where it was and what year and where it was and where a it was. long freaking time All the ago. Little details. Because he's been dead since nineteen seventy seven. I know. Uh, this past week was my anniversary, my one year anniversary of going to Graceland. Wow. And I was like, wow, what a time. Um, yeah, Mark and I are both big, big fans of live albums. We, I mean, that's just, that's, that's a big, I love it with her, you know, Rush is one of my favorites. They, they just always sound good live. They always record live very, very well. Do you listen to live albums just casually or for me, whenever I listen to a live album, it's like, okay, like I'm listening to this album from start to finish. Would you listen to live tracks just like kind of on the go? Absolutely. Either way. 
yeah, the start to finish or like, oh, yeah, here's a track I haven't heard in a while. I'll just listen to one song. Yeah, both. For me, something about the arrangement of a live album and how they arranged it to be played to get to put you through those emotions. Yeah, I love the way it's arranged. So when I listen to albums, when we're talking old, we're talking old school music. Brent dropping stuff again. No, Brendan. He can't keep his shit together today. It's, no, it's just Jesus. That's it's in his Brandon. pants. I always drop it. Know, Can you roll does. up a newspaper and thwop him on the nose for us, Devin? <laughs> <laughs> but part of that is that I, I'm a bit such I'm, I'm such a big concert person. Whenever a tour is announced, I always try to figure out the set list. Oh yeah. I go, okay, they have a new album. They're gonna play X number of songs on that album, and I'll try to guess the songs. I'll go, okay, that also means they're going to have to cut four or five or six songs of the older ones out. Okay, what what songs are they going to cut? Are they going to bring any old songs back? So to Mark's point, that arrangement of the set list and how are they going to put the set list together? You know, and I would love to be in the room when those guys have that convert or girls have that conversation. And I would love one day to, hey, who, Chris, who's your favorite band? Who's your second favorite band? Who's your third favorite band? You get to do the set list you get to pick five songs of the set list. Cause I'm always curious of, Hey man, we we're so sick of playing that one song. We're just not going to do it anymore. And I give artists credit. They've been around 20 years or whatever. We have played that song 2000 times. Fuck you. We're not playing it anymore. Yeah. I don't care. We're not going to play it. We, uh, yes. The fans love it. No fuck off. So I would love to be a fly on the wall and see how they come up with the whole set list. What, what song goes where, what's the encore, what's the opening song. Those are, to me, that's a big decision because they're going to play it for six months. Right. Yeah. Part of my job at the label um, was when I would go. So basically they would send an artist out as an opener to like a super low key tour so that yeah. they could generate um, an idea of what tracks to push. But okay. then when you're pushing those tracks, it also kind of creates an idea of which ones you, when you do have a full set. Cause again, when you're a new artist, your full set isn't actually a full set. Cause chances are you're probably uh, still an opener, but on a, you know, a little bit more prestigious, prestigious tour. Um, but it was interesting to see like they, sometimes there'd be singles that they wanted to push as like a single um, or songs that they want to push as a single and they wouldn't go over that well to a live crowd um, and vice versa. And then they would curate, uh, a track list for the live shows from that data that we would take. That's super interesting. But I'm not really that. sure how like large artists do it. I, I wonder how much uh, like I wonder how much control they really have because I feel like at some point I mean like I also feel like at some point when you're like Taylor Swift or you're like John Mayer or something I feel like you can just kind of do whatever you want. I feel like Taylor Swift has complete control of everything. I mean, oh yes now. she does. Not, yeah. Well, I found it interesting. You know how everybody says, hey, I don't mean to shit on anybody, and then you shit on them? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I don't mean to shit on uh, Ray LaMontagne, for example. <laughs> I love Ray LaMontagne's music. It's unique. His voice is j different. But his album, he only his live stuff is only that album. Uh, he does not play any other stuff. That, yeah, so I don't, and he you tours have to kind like of be, every summer. I know, and it's just his newest album. And I'll be honest. Without real context, you know, you're, I, I understand to Chris's point, we don't want to play that song anymore, but there was, uh, I, I like Edwin McCain, right? And he's obviously got famous off of I'll Be. And he goes, I don't understand artists who have that feeling. It's like looking at a lottery ticket on and framing it on the wall and being like, that gosh darn lottery ticket, how <laughs> dare you, how dare you give me all my money? You know what I mean? So like, he always plays I'll Be because that's what, that's what got him, you know, paid right in that respect yeah definitely i'm i i'm just excited to get back to concerts soon um and yeah i'm really there's a whole bunch of music that's been released since covid that i'm just dying to see live what do you what? guys think um because i've all, i had five shows from march into september i was going to go to and they were all, obviously they were all canceled one of them was with 93,000 of my closest friends at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> and I was very upset about that. I had four days off and going to play golf in LA and see a bunch of Germans screaming. It's going to be amazing. So that's all been rescheduled, right? For next year. Hey, everyone, next year, we're going to have concerts. Do you, what do you guys think? Is that going to be a real possibility? I'm going to be quiet on this one. Uh <laughs> no, I don't want you to be quiet. Uh -huh. 
Um, I for think for legal reasons. Yeah. So okay. I think Kevin might ha- know. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Oh, and I okay. believe it's a little. Um, like I think they kind of had meetings about it. For me, I don't want to step on like any toes. So of course, of no, course. No, yeah, you're good. Um, as like a listener and just like a person, uh, I genuinely, I just don't, I can't. It takes a lot to plan a tour. Uh, of course. And I don't think that if coronavirus was cured tomorrow, that they would be able just to plan a like that a tour would be able just to get up and go for at the very least like six months and that i don't even know i'm just guessing so like you also have to factor in when vaccines come out you still need to uh make sure everyone has them and they're not getting released like mass amounts at first so i mean i definitely think it's within two years i i say it would go back to normal but i i do know too that like Ticketmaster has recently announced that when shows do come back you need to show proof of um having the vaccine Etc. So, I mean, I I just don't think they're, I don't think anyone has a solid time on it. And I think, of course, no, I was just wanted your opinion. Yeah. No, that's definitely my opinion. I definitely would say anticipate longer than sooner. Yes. No. And I agree with that completely. And I'm just very surprised that the the tour that was going to be in September this year has been rescheduled for September next year. And I don't think it's going to happen. I really, 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 really want it to. But I really don't think it will. Yeah, I definitely I I can't imagine it would because I mean ten months what is that? Is that ten months? I do that correctly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten they pushed months. everything back a year, right? Yeah. I, I, I think that was just an easy thing to do at first because no one necessarily knew the kind of toll that yes, this would take. Agreed. And I think it's just a lot easier to let people continue to buy tickets or whatever and then just refund them than it is to cancel it and then replan something else. Of course, and I totally get all that. I, I, I just, I don't understand how you could. I just don't foresee it happening, and that makes me really sad. Oh, same. I mean, especially Ugh. now that I'm living in the city, I have so much access to a bunch of venues, and to be so close to them and not be able to actually go to them and utilize them makes me so sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's one of those crazy things. But, you know, 2020. Uh, Woo! Poop! Yay. There's poop everywhere. It's almost over. There is? Ew. Thank God it's almost yeah. over. Hey, it's uh, 2021. Yay! <laughs> I don't see much changing. I actually love but... working from home, though. No, dude. it's all good. I Being in my flip-flops and so... hanging out with my dogs, working from home has been great. I do. Love, so, Brennan, love you want to go home. deep, man. Do you have a deep topic you wanted to discuss? Because we're all about it. Um. No, we don't do deep stuff here. <laughs> okay, so then let me ask... Uh, uh Miss Devin, what's your best Billy Idol story? Uh, I don't even know. That you can reveal to us. I like I well they like personally, I just don't really like talk like I don't know. I just don't really like talking about that type of stuff. I don't even tell Brendan Tor's story. Do you want to plead the fifth? I plead the fifth. I oh, also don't have damn. many Billy Idol stories. Like I like we were we just coincided. Like there like I didn't work for him or anything. Um I worked for the other artists that was happening. Okay. Right. But it is just funny. Like I don't know. A funny <laughs> they were a good group of people. <laughs> okay. So I do pe- plead the fifth on that one. I apologize. Okay. No, no, that's worry. fine. No, no I'm not gonna. We're not yeah. here to dox people yes. or get anybody in trouble. Correct. Believe me, we've we've cut out things for with other guests. So <laughs> if we have to, we have to. We get it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you. What I are the what are, what are you guys? What, what artists are you dying to get on your show? Um, in a world in which people thought we were like accredited, I would. You, say... In my world, you're accredited. So, what artists do you top three that you guys want to get on? Okay, I really I don't know if you guys listen to Bruno Major. Um, he is, I'm literally obsessed with him. He, his album to let a good thing die is the best album of 2020. He is like a lo-fi pop acoustic singer songwriter. His lyrics are awesome. Um, I would love to talk with him and just kind of go through his songs and really just unpack them. Um, love him so much. (laughs) Devin, what about you? Is there an artist that you have in mind? Um, okay, well, I'm really excited about the girl we actually have on tomorrow. Oh, that's or right. Or the woman. Um, I, we recently found her, and Cassidy her name's Cassidy King. King, and I'm so excited about her. I think, 
Um, she is, sorry, I know we we like interview artists who are like up and coming, but she's one of the artists who I I'm like pretty confident she's going to make it. Yeah, she sounds that name sounds really familiar. It does. She's very. She has like a decent following and a decent. Um, the thing about her too yeah, is she has name. she's so independent right now. Like I don't even think she's working. We were emailing her, not even her manager. Yeah, like I just think. Her so it's like the Macklemore of uh, female <laughs> music pop singers. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah. Like she's just amazing, and I think it's the first artist that I've genuinely been like, I really want to like talk to her. Like I love all the artists that we work for, and I like their music for different reasons. But this girl, she just has yeah, like you're a legitimate sing- fan. Yeah, like I actually like will sit and listen to her, and that's like a very rare. Like I have artists that I'll just listen to the whole album, and I'll that's the only thing I'll listen to for a month straight. Mm-hmm. Like I'll just unpack every little thing, and with her music, every song just sounds so different, and her voice itself just sounds really different. Um, so I feel like I'm listening to a different artist every with every one of her songs, and so I'm really excited about having her. That's and awesome. you're you're talking with her tomorrow? Yeah. Yes, we are. Excellent. Yeah. Do you guys have a uh, – I'm trying to think how to phrase the question. So do you have a standard format with every artist? Like do you have a list of questions or do you try to be more free-formed? Because I know you mentioned that you guys have a problem with certain people going on tangents. It's so do you both. just let them go? <laughs> so, I mean, my our whole thing is like I'm not – I hate radio interviews and I hate like mainstream interviews where they ask questions that are not really important. Um, and I, like I, for example, I, I, this is honestly one of the reasons that it ever started is like, I love a lot of my artists don't get my favorite artists don't get media attention. And when they do, you know, it's with some trashy, stupid ass company and they're asked like, tell me about your shoes and stuff like that. So (laughs) my, (laughs) Oh, those are our favorite questions. Yeah, exactly. Who are you wearing? Yeah. And it's like, I don't, there's no set, you know, type of questions because then that gets repetitive what i like to do is i really like to do my research and find out information about them and then kind of say well what don't i know about them and how can i find that out and what do i, I want to know about them like what are the last artist we interviewed his name is grant schaefer he was in a gap year from the school that was ranked the number one most intense school wake forest in north carolina yeah and he oh, wow. decided to pursue music full-time and he's like blowing up on tiktok so i was genuinely wondering i'm like like you know i i wanted to talk about that gap year and i like looked at a bunch of interviews with him and, and no one was talking about that and for me like i care about this artist so i'm like genuinely like i mean he's clearly going through a bunch of changes he was just a freshman at like one of the hardest schools in the country and now he is pursuing music full-time blowing up on tiktok like i wanted to break down like kind of his mindset and his emotions this time so like there's no set format but it's it's our format is definitely like let's stray from the conventional we're all over question. the place yeah all over the place but also it makes sense it's with existing within the same world if that makes sense yeah i, I really dig that because that's yeah. what i'm trying that, and that's why i asked this because i'm trying to learn you know because we're this is new to us so I'm trying to pick your guy's brain on how how do I be better? That's yeah. what I'm always trying to figure out. You well, know? it's funny. I mean, I'm still doing that every day too. Like, I will never be confident in anything that I put out ever. Um, I recently just joined like a Facebook group of a bunch of podcasters, and I actually am finding some some good information. And and like just because some people get like two streams per episode doesn't mean they don't provide insight. Like for example, some of the simplest things we're still learning, which is is crazy because. In one aspect, we're we're you know emailing the president of PR at <laughs> like oh, Columbia Records, uh, and then another aspect, I don't even know how to make a video that has the audio like move on it. So like I had to use a Facebook group for that, and it's just like I think a big thing of it is just never taking yourself too seriously and always be open minded to expand and and take criticism because if someone's gonna even if I, I've never had to face. Um, hard or like negative criticism like that you know like was intended to hurt me but even if i did i think that could definitely be rooted in some type of not truth but there could be something there i could unpack that to further work on it so i just always be open to i mean after every show with Devin, i think we 
drive home and then I send her a voice message. She sends me a voice message of what we should do better next time and, and what we can, or what we did really good on. La- like the last time we interviewed a, a girl for the first time in a while. And I just saw like Devin was able to relate to her a lot more than the other artists, obviously, um, cause they have similar experiences just being a woman in music. Um, and I, I think the first thing I said when we stopped rapping, I was like, oh, he just did such a good job. And like, that was cool too, because it helped me hone into like, you know, what's, we are people at the end of the day. So let's ask them questions or let's talk about things that, you know, are shared experiences among humans unrelated to music, et cetera. Yeah. That's a very good point. I really like that. Yeah. Um, I, I can't speak for Chris, but I definitely have a huge case of the imposter syndrome mm. in me. And I'm like, what, you know, what can we fix every time? And we did an early episode uh, and I remember real quick was like the phrase real quick, real quick, kept jumping in with that phrase, kind of like the like, you know, yeah. or the so. Oh, I'm such and, a like person. Uh, and we, so am I. Yeah, I'm from California, so I say like and dude all the time. Bro. But that's not my fault. It's okay, yeah, I bro. grew up on the I beach, mean, bro. But that's the thing is like if that's the way you speak, then that's the way you speak. And I think that's right. something that I struggled with too about like swearing and, and talking about, you know, content that's a little subjective or, or maybe a little bit too personal. At the end of the day, that's legitimately who I am. And that's who I want to showcase on any work that I'm putting out. And it took again, like it, it was a journey to kind of find that that's the narrative that i want to share but i i think just genuine and like that's another thing like the most cliche advice is actually like some of the best advice i've ever been given like yeah be yourself like, like actually like that shit is actually super important especially when absolutely. you're pushing out media because so many people are pushing out content and they're all trying to be like each other so when you really can you know be yourself people do resonate with you more because even if you don't have that much of a platform or if you don't think you have that much of a platform, you do. And like, I personally have gotten messages that are like, Oh, I like, I really like this show. Like, or I like your social media or something. Like I liked your post. Like it's just, I don't know. It's just like, it's reassuring when people uh, kind of react to things that are, are less manufactured. I think that is a, a great way to put it. Like absolutely the right. More the less you can manufacture yourself but still kind of do what you're trying to do is is the is the best. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but you know. Yeah, no, it totally <laughs> makes sense. And and to your point, it's kind of the reason we have the show the way we have ours is because it's kind of like Ben Rector, old friends. You can't make old friends. Mm-hmm. We've known each other 28 years. So the conversation just bounces off each other so fluidly. And, you know, it just works really well. And that's what the genuine nature of the conversation is what people seem to be most, you know, it most resonates with them. For sure. And just, I mean, for me as a listener too, I just like when I can find out something that I never knew before about someone who I've heard information from before, that's, I like that. Whenever an artist tells me like, oh, that's a good question or, oh, I've never been asked that before. I'm like, yes. (laughs) Like that's what I Yeah. You get that little. Heck yeah. 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 It's awesome. You uh, mentioned on a podcast I listened to that you're, you use the term cool shoes. What do you exactly do you, what's your definition of cool shoes? In regards, was that with um, Kuwata by any chance? No, that was the one where you guys just talked about yourselves. Oh, so interesting. And we were talking about how you were like, Oh, like if I want it, like we're very go with the flow, and you're like, if I want to tell you, you have cool shoes, like I'm going to tell you, you have cool shoes. And I, <laughs> I, why do I not remember that at all? <laughs> I don't know because we were sober for the. Oh crap! You were sober. That's the problem. I know. Wait, hold on. I'm actually genuinely curious. So it what did I say? Intro. I said something about cool shoes. So we were like talking if... about how like you were like you don't like how traditional pot like interviews are and you're like oh oh yeah no so like i think like a lot of the time i i actually was i'm not i won't name names but i was in a a press room interview and they asked the artists who they were wearing and they didn't know and it was so awkward and the team got so mad um and i just always think about that because it's like you don't care who they're wearing you know like you you as an interviewer don't care what you are trying to convey is that you like their shoes. And I think that is an appropriate sentence. I think it's so traditional to ask, who are you wearing? But at the end of the day, no one knows who they're wearing. Like, unless it's a red carpet where you're, you're there to like, 
uh, you know, promote the designer, but like on a regular interview basis, I mean, you're just trying to look fresh. Like you don't act, you're not like decked out in other people's clothing. So I, what I more so meant was like, if I, f- I, I'm not gonna, uh, I guess manufacture the way that I feel into a traditional podcast format. I'm just kind of gonna say what I I want. Well said. I thought you were super like into Converse or something like that. Oh, no, I definitely love Crocs. I'm wearing Crocs right now. Okay. All right. See, (laughs) that's how I interpreted what you said was that you were super into one type of shoes. Oh. So that's what I wanted to know. I mean, maybe no. that day, that's how I was feeling. This I, just in, Brendan's into Crocs. <laughs> he <laughs> is, no, and I, he's literally I, wearing them right I'm now. I'm going to be honest. Like, I was a little upset when Crocs, like, came back because I never thought they left. Like, I was always an ironically, like, <laughs> I ironically work. They off. never left, man. And, no, they never did. And, it's like, like the bell bottom of footwear, man. Yeah, Come on. yeah, no, exactly. They came back. <laughs> But no, they you know did what? not I come never... back. They still need to be torched. Uh, Post Malone has Crocs, oh, so that's enough for me. Fine. He also has tattoos on his face, Brandon. When are you getting those? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's what we do, man. We just we're just glib. We're just glib with our response. Yeah, we talk shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if, is there's anything else you wanted to share? Anything else you wanted to talk about? We're here all day. It's always like a time warp. We're already an hour and a half in. If you guys haven't noticed, shut but, up. Uh, we do, yeah. in fact, have a photo shoot. Not to sound like bougie motherfuckers, so but we, we do have a skirt. photo shoot that we need to totally get to. Totally bougie. Um, yeah, absolutely. It was a pleasure. I'll be honest. My two glasses of wine hit a little bit harder than I was anticipating. Mm. So I can't wait to uh, listen um... back and hear how slurred my words are. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't sound great. Sound you both very, sound yeah, great. Yeah, you sound good, man. Keep drinking. Yes. Ah. Well, Christopher. No, I actually, I actually have been. Um, I decided to not drink or like do anything that manipulates your brain for like two weeks. Um, so this is my first glass in two weeks. Oh, very nice. It's really well done, Ed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know why. Good luck on the hangover tomorrow. You'll be like, what the heck? I know. (laughs) After like two glasses of, and it's not even real. It is wine, but it's like strawberry wine from Trader Joe's. So it's like not even. Ooh, delicious. Mm. It's like a Deanna Carter song. (laughs) <laughs> or Dana Carter or whatever. Strawberry. See, like, I know my country. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd probably know more Three country songs. than I do. Uh, <laughs> as a country DJ? Yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, thanks so much for being on with yes, us. We, thank you guys it's so, so much. It's so great having you. Thank um, you. We'll, we're going to post this in its entirety. Okay. We're going to put, like, the ins and outs and everything. Good luck on your photo shoot. Thank you so much. Once well, again, we're it. here with, <laughs> once again, we're here with Brendan and Devin from Music, your missing podcast. Guys, you want any closing uh, words? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you um, for listening. If you liked us, you should probably check us out. Um, I think I think maybe one thing we forgot is that like we always we update this playlist called Music You're Missing, which is kind of cool if you like music but don't want to listen to our podcast. But uh, either way. Bye. And that's on Spotify, right? Bye. Yeah, it's on the playlist is on Spotify and Apple Music. Apple Perfect. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, Devin never knows Apple, what it's called. It's Apple Music. Apple Podcast. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much for, for sticking around with us. Chris, you always have to close it out for us, Our man. Our closing statements, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Amen. Party on. Bless up. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye.